If you go into the resources section, you'll find two files. Double underscore pendulum dot m, which is this file here we're looking at. And there's also a double underscore pendulum underscore ode dot m, which is this file here. So let's start off by looking at the double underscore pendulum dot m file. Now we'll ignore the first two lines for the moment and we'll look at the rest of the lines. So the rest of the lines here are just the differential equations which we have derived using the calculus of variations for the double pendulum. So let's bring those up as a reminder. So here are all of our equations here. So we're going to start off with a value of m1 which is the mass of the inner pendulum and we've made that a value 2. We'll have m2 which is the mass of the outer pendulum which we'll make a value of 1. We've got the length of the inner pendulum L1, which is a value of 2, and the length of the outer pendulum L2, which is a value of 1. We'll also have gravity, which we'll define as 9.8. Now I've got those written down here in the comment section. So now we'll move on and we'll look at the values A, B, C, D, E and F. So these are the values here, A, B, C, D, E and F. So A is M1 plus M2 L1, so we have M1 plus M2 L1. B is M2 L2 cos delta theta, so we have M2 L2 cos of, now delta theta is theta 1 minus theta 2. In this instance theta 1 is defined as Y1 and theta 2 is a value of Y3. So we'll, we'll see where we get those just in a minute, but we'll talk through the rest of them first. So we're going to have C which is equal to m2 l1 cos delta theta. So we're going to have m2 l1 cos of, again, delta theta is y1 minus y3. We'll have d, which is m2 l2. So that's straightforward. d equals m2 l2. And we'll have a value of e, which is minus m2 l2 omega 2 squared sine delta theta. So we'll have minus m2 l2. Now, the value for our omega 2 is given by y4. So we have y4 times y4 times the sine of delta theta, which is y1 minus y3. The second part is minus m1 plus m2 g sine theta 1. So that's going to be given by minus g m1 plus m2 sine of the y1. Now finally, the value of f is going to be given by our m2 l1 omega 1 squared sine delta theta, so it's going to be given by m2 l1. Now the value for our omega 1 is y2, so we have y2 times y2 times the sine of the delta theta, which is y1 minus y3. And that's going to be minus the value m2 g sine theta 2, so it's minus m2 g and the sine of, now theta 2 is again, as we mentioned, is the value of y3. So those are all of the values put in for A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, we're also going to have the other values here, which are values for omega 1, and we have omega 2, we'll have omega 1 dot and omega 2 dot, and we're going to be passing those back into this double pendulum function, double pen underscore pendulum underscore ODE. So we start off with our omega 1, and We'll define omega, omega 1 as going to be our y2 value, which is the angular velocity. So we already know that there. We've mentioned it before. We just take a copy of that y2 and place it into omega 1. And the value of our omega 1 dot, well, omega 1 dot is ed minus bf upon ad minus bc. So we just write that in, ed minus bf upon ad minus uh, b times c. The value of our omega 3, well the omega 3 is going to be this um, omega 2, okay, so the, the third one is going to be given by our y4, which our y4 here, again we've mentioned it previously, is our omega 2. And the final one here is going to be given our omega 2 dot, and it's our AF minus CE upon AD minus BC, and we've got those written down here. So a bit of a mouthful there, but you can see that they just follow the same route 
as the equations which we have generated through our, our derivation using the calculus of variations. So let's see how we actually, uh, what we actually do here with these functions. So you can see here we've got this uh, omega equals zero is four comma one. So that sets up, uh, it sets up a matrix which is going to be have four elements, and the four elements it's going to have are going to be our omega one, two, three, and four. So this matrix is going to hold our value for our omega one, omega one dot, omega two, omega two dot. And those values are going to be passed as an output. Okay, so it gets passed as an output from this function and it will get accepted into the double pendulum function. Now the double pendulum function, it actually calculates the new angles, which is our angles, our theta 1 and theta 2. And those angles get passed back into this function here. So the y value here is going to be have a value of our y1, 2, 3, and 4. So these values here get created or they, they get um, worked out within the second function here, and they get passed back in here. So the small increments in the angle theta are placed in the y1 and our y3, and also our small increments in our value for our omega are in the values of y2 and our y4. And the output from this function here, as I said, actually gets passed into the double pendulum. So let's look at the double pendulum function here. So this is our double pendulum function here. Now we can, it really starts off from this line here. So this line here is our, our ODE45, so this is our MATLAB um, differential equation solver. So it's solving the differential equation which is defined by double pendulum, which is this function here. And it starts off with a timestamp, so it goes from time zero to a value of S time. So we can change how long the simulation runs by changing this S time value. So I've got a value of five for five seconds, but you can change that to whatever you want. We've also got the length L1 is two and L2 is a value of one. So these are the same as the previous function. And we also have the initial conditions here. So the initial conditions are going to be given by theta one, omega one, theta two, and omega two. So these are actually in radians and Theta 1 is going to be the angle of the inner pendulum. So what we do is, if the inner pendulum is just hanging down, we have to, we raise it up so it's at 180 deg degrees. So in effect, the pendulum is pointing vertically upwards. So the 180 degrees is given by 3.14 in radians. Now the omega 1 is the angular velocity, is defined as the starting the velocity is 0. The second pendulum is going to be uh, sitting flat, so it'll be moving over to the right, so it'll actually be a value of 90 degrees, which is 1.57, and the, the velocity is going to start at a value of zero. So these are the initial conditions, this is the timestamp, and this is the function that we're working on, and these are the outputs. So the outputs, as I mentioned, is going to be a value of t and a value of y, so the value of y again gets fed back in to the other function. Okay, so that value y there, which is, actually has four values, gets fed back into this function here is y1, y2, y3, and y4. We also have to work out the final positions. Okay, so in order to actually plot the thing off, we're going to have to write out our positions. Now, we've already worked out our positions whenever we looked at the initial uh, derivation. So if you go back to the original drawing, you can see our x1 and our y1, x2 and our y2 is going to be defined by these equations here. So just go back in and have a look and as you remind yourself uh, where these come from. 
So what we're going to do is we create the movie here. So we're going to count through one frame at a time. So we go from a value of 1 to some value uh, length of y. And that's going to count through. So this is our count here and this is our frame. And we can change the hold on and hold off functions here in order to uh, put a trace on it or take the trace off. And it's just plotting the values x2 and each of the values of i. Okay, so for i is equal to 1 to this length of y. And we can draw our lines here as well. So these are our actual pendulum lines. So we have our um, inner pendulum here and we also have our, our, our and our outer pendulum line here. So I also worked through and I've plotted off the value of theta 1 against time. So this is our theta 1 against time here and this is our theta 2 against time. And finally I've plotted off the actual x and y positions of the second uh, pendulum. So this is the very very end of the second pendulum. So you can see the uh, actual position of that pendulum ball. So that's all there is to these two functions. Now I've made a recording of the values of the actual uh, simulation. Now if I try to run it here, all you need to do in order to run it is to go into double underscore pendulum underscore ODE and you can get into the editor section and just type the, press the run button. I don't know if you can quite see that here. So I can just go into editor and I can just type in, just press the run. And that will run this. But the computer here, it's running uh, very slowly. So it take a little bit of time for this actually to, to show up. So what I've done is I've recorded this and you can watch the recording. So this now. is a double pendulum simulation running for five seconds. It takes a little bit longer because I've slowed it down a little bit. Also, it's a little bit elongated because it's on a wide screen here. But it gives an indication here of the double pendulum. Now I've re-ran the simulation and I've left the trace on so you can see the end point here. And you can see that creating the trace of the end point of the second pendulum. So just in a second we'll also have a wee look at the angles of the theta 1 and theta 2 with respect to time and also this trace. So this is it here. We have our theta 1, theta 2 with respect to time at the top and we also have our trace at the bottom which I'm tracing round at the moment and that is the end point of the pendulum. So that's the end of the simulation. So if you're curious, you can always get into the simulation in MATLAB and change some of the variables. So we could change the values for our mass M1 and M2. We could change the length of the pendulum and you could change the initial starting condition. So the pendulum start at different points. So I hope this was of use and value to you. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.